Hello everyone, I hope you're doing fine. My name is Skyline and welcome to another solo queue school. We haven't had one in a while, but today we have one in GM this time from Toby. And you know, today we're gonna to be talking about some of the differences between GM, top 500 and other ranks as well. And there's a reason I usually don't do GM gameplay. And maybe by the end of the, by the end of this video, we will either see exactly why I never do these or Maybe I'll learn that, hey, they were good after all. So let me know in the comments whether you liked uh, doing a GM video. It's going to be a lot nittier and grittier than usual. So with that being said, let's take a look at what just happened. So with the recent nerfs to Anna, or kind of recent-ish, I guess, she's been moving more and more towards her grenade. You need to have really solid grenades every single fight without fail to be a top-level Anna. And uh, one of the easiest, kind of one of the easiest techniques, and we're going to see it here, is when your Winston jumps in, because there are a lot of Winstons floating around, when your Winston jumps in, it's nice to just throw, throw a grenade that follows him, because his leap has about the same speed as the grenade's velocity. And so when he lands, the grenade will hit both him and whatever target he lands on. So for example here, if Toby, our hero, had thrown his grenade, he would have hit both his own allied Winston and the enemy Winston, which would have been pretty nice. As a result, uh, his Winston could have kept on pushing without too much fear. And because he would be at full health, he would have the healing buff. Now, yeah, his Winston could have played a little bit more aggressively there, but you know, we saw here that the nade that Toby chose to go for. Now, yeah, he had to play a little bit around the Diva defense matrix. That's why you couldn't throw it like right here, for example. That was some pretty good uh, holding back right here. He sees the defense matrix. Even though that's a juicy triple nade, he's not going to take it. But there wasn't a defense matrix before, right? So let's pay attention to those nades as we continue to go through. Now, uh, something that is a little bit nittier and grittier, though, that I normally wouldn't talk about if this were like a silver, gold, platinum, whatever. Uh, so Toby's about to throw out a sleep, and it is a decidedly terrible, awful sleep. And I'm going to go a little bit harder on this one because Toby is a mod and, uh, you know, we, he, he's a regular on the Twitch stream and stuff. So we can we can have a little fun with him. So this sleep should never, should never be a thing. We're going to see this going through the VOD as well. Toby tends to make very early sleeps. Like right here, this would be so easy, right? The Winston jumped on him. This would be an e easy sleep. And Toby actually would have lived for quite a while. The Winston would be slept. Toby would be uh, hiding in this in this hotel, and it's possible that his team could have come back in time and maybe shaved off an extra ten seconds. It's possible, right? Now, in this case, did it really matter? I mean, hey, our tracers on the point. We also have our Winston going onto the point as well now. So, uh, or he he was thinking about it. So you know what? Maybe it could have mattered. You never know. But little mistakes like that, and we're going to see, can lose a game very, very quickly. We saw a whiff grenade, a whiff sleep. Okay, maybe they could have won the fight if he had landed the grenade and the sleep. We're going to see another fight here that a very, very small mistake is going to turn the tables on. And then that'll lead me into my main point. So once again, Iweth, our Winston player, he's going to decide to go in. In fact, he's communicating this as well. And so, uh, let's see, here we go, whoop, there we go. Now, we're a little bit too far back on the corner. We could be a little bit further up, playing a little bit more aggressively. Now remember, uh, taking proper, precise angles is very important here. Now right now, you're peeking the, just the Zenyatta, but the Zenyatta can't stand here, he's peeking like three of your team members. So, Toby, you can see where, he was standing all the way back here, right? He could have easily been standing along this line which would have allowed him to be able to support his Winston a little bit more quickly. And we're going to see there's the leap in. Another grenade, and it's another whiff. Remember what I said before. Now, you don't always have to do this, but generally, the easiest way to throw an okay grenade every single fight is to just follow your Winston in. And we see again that Toby doesn't follow the Winston in. Instead, he just kind of threw a solo single grenade onto the enemy soldier player, Landing one solo grenade usually isn't that effective. Another kind of whiffed sleep there. And, and now, there's a difference between aim and fundamentals. I'm not talking about 
Kobe's aim here, right? Because technically he could have hit both of these sleeps that I've been talking about so far, but it's just very suboptimal timing to throw it out. This is an incredibly difficult shot. He's trying to fire a shot at a soldier flying through the air who could be sprinting. He could be air strafing either way while he's falling. Like, that's such a hard shot. You don't want to take that. Instead, here, when the soldier lands, first of all, it's just easier in general because he's not falling anymore. Uh, but also, this is an easy sleep. In fact, if you shoot a sleep here, it's very difficult for the soldier to maneuver away because his mobility options are limited here. So once again, follow the Winston with the grenade. Hold the sleeps. If he had landed a better grenade, if he had hit, if he had potentially landed that sleep or just any better sleep, once again, his team could have potentially taken that fight. All right. So just a couple little itty, not even that big of mistakes. I mean, they are big when I'm talking about them in these con in this context. But you know, if this were a plat game or a diamond game or a master game, these mistakes, I mean, they would be whatever. Right, but right now the cart's pushing towards the second point already. They could even lose this, and oh, a death. We're gonna lose the second point because we die with nano boost and all, and all of our abilities. Now, let's go even deeper. All right, let's go back. This is right before our hero died, and could we see that Hanzo at all? Now, all right, this is good. We're scoped in. We're looking at our Winston. He needs to be healed anyway. Cool. We don't see anything up there. Still don't see anything up there, and uh, we're about to die. Oh, no. And this is the difference between top 500 and Grandmaster. And really, the difference between any rank is how many mistakes you're allowed to make in a game before you lose. So in most ranks, this mistake, you, most of you probably didn't even see what the mistake was, necessarily would go unnoticed. In fact, you know, if you're in bronze, you can make 200 mistakes a game and be fine. If you're in silver, you can make 100. Platinum, you can probably make like 70, 60. You know, it just goes down the list. Until you get to like GM, you can make maybe 10. And then uh, by the time you get to top 500, we're talking about nearly flawless games on a fundamental level, nearly flawless. And remember, Aim is never going to be something that is always consistent. There's no such thing as a 100% shot. But fundamentals, you can get that 100% for sure. Now, if we look at this angle here, even if we imagine that there wasn't a Hanzo doing Hanzo things up there, this is still suboptimal. Let me show you why. Here we are on King's Row, and Toby was standing here. Now, remember, when we're talking about positioning fundamentals, you know, if, to be a top 500 player, you need to always have the correct angle every single time. You need to just be able to instantly realize it, especially for Anna, which is a hero that literally is all about angles. So let's take a look at what advan what advantages and disadvantages we have. You know, what what do we have access to? Well, we can stand here, but obviously, you know, this one is just knocked out right away because. Well, remember, all of our teammates, they were here. We had a Winston up here. We had a Tracer or something down here. All of our teammates in the fight was focused in this area. So it makes no sense to be here. Okay, cool. So then we have here. Okay, that's kind of cool because we have access to both of these areas. And we can see this, but not very, not really to a useful extent. We'd have to come all the way up here to really see that better. Okay, okay. So this will at least let us heal our team let's keep going though let's go over here this is kind of this is kind of the next area that we could be over here so we're using the cover and hey look at this we can actually see our teammates just fine but we have the we actually have more vision right we can see more things we can see further down this corridor to the rest of the fight in addition we have a lot more protection a lot more protection because we have cover we can duck back very easily. We can also hear the footsteps behind us. Uh, this is a narrow corridor, so it's a very easy sleep. It's almost impossible to dodge, right? And this just seems way better in every way, right? And in this case, if Toby was taking the optimal positioning, the Hanzo actually wouldn't be able to kill him. It would, yeah, the Hanzo just couldn't kill him without like doing jumping down and doing a trick shot and then immediately dying, right? So this is a scenario where normally, if you were in a platinum game, even a diamond game, something like that, if you were standing here, 99% of the time, no problem, right? 99% of the time, it's going to be fine. 
But if you're pushing for top 500 on GM, this is the thing that's going to kill you. And we see Toby losing fights consistently throughout the game that we've seen so far to these little microscopic errors. And so let's go back to the video. If he had been taking that angle, he wouldn't have died to Rajang's Hanzo scatter arrow. He would have been alive for a nano-boosted uh, soldier visor. And as a result, I think that their team would have almost certainly won that fight because, um, I, mean, I mean, sure, okay, the Hanzo gets a triple kill, whatever. But I think a nano visor had a pretty good shot of winning that fight, especially considering all the other ultimates that were burned as well. So we're on the last point. We've only made a couple teensy tiny mistakes, but you can see how that's the difference between potentially still being on the first point, more, more than likely still on the streets phase, right? And being having your back up against the wall, five minutes left on the clock, that's an absolutely immense amount of time to be defending the last point. Now, his team is finally going to push back. We're going to ult. Okay, we're going to wipe them. Shatter, by the way, he's playing with Shatter in this game. He's just going to go nuts. All right, kill him. Cool. Uh, now, I'm going to talk about fundamentals a little bit more versus mechanics, right? Now, Toby's mechanics have been pretty fine. He has pretty good aim. Not not too bad, right? And it's important to have a certain level of aim, a certain level of just... Uh, that. That's the main physical mechanic in Overwatch. But the reason why I usually don't focus on it is because, like I said, aim is never 100%. There is no such thing as a 100% shot. Another whiff grenade, by the way. Even a shot where it's right there, the guy's standing still, you could still theoretically miss it. There's a 98% shot, 95% shot, 90% shot, but there's no such thing as a 100% shot. Not, not a thing. But there is such a thing as 100% fundamentals like here when we were talking about this angle for this versus this angle you can choose this correctly 100% of the time it's not random so when you're going back and you're looking at your VODs take a look at the mistakes you're making even if they didn't matter if I mean if you that is if you can't find the next step right if you're like hey I thought I'd, I thought I was doing well I thought I was carrying I don't know what I did wrong take a look at all of these types of little microscopic mistakes because from Toby's perspective after this game you know I can imagine maybe he thinks he played a really good game, which he did. I mean, he's a GM player, of course. Every game is going to be really good at that point. The thing is the little mistakes. So let's take a look at this next fight. Diva Bomb comes out. It's going to wind up helping uh, killing their Lucio player. Shatter goes down. We have no more Genji. Our Winston is going nuts in the back. And we just completely, uh, well, let's take a look at that. So here I think it's pretty wise to save the nano boost for now because, I mean, look at this. We're down to Lucio. All right, that's already looking kind of bad. Our Winston is being a crazy man up there. He should be dead any second now. Shatter doesn't have a blade as far as I know, although I think Toby could be a little bit more diligent with pressing that tab key. Let's not burn things that we don't have to. I would also have been a good healer. So like I said before, though, Winston's going crazy. He's dead. Genji's dead. Lucio's dead. Everyone's dead. This is fine. We're definitely not going to be saving him. That's not. That's never going to happen. And the Tracer doesn't need our help either. So right now is the time to back off. Toby instead goes forward, throws out a grenade, which uh, this grenade actually is, is not too bad. I think that's going to hit quite a few players. We have another very weird sleep grenade, a uh, really weird sleep dart. So this is a fundamental thing. This is crosshair placement. This is not aim because he's not aiming at anything and that wasn't like a flick or anything like that. He just straight up looked, pre-fired, and then shot. And he just wasn't correct. So that's just more map knowledge you need. And uh, But he's, he's just going to die because he peeks out too far, right? That's something that can't be happening. Because uh, now, theoretically, what if they push to the end here? A nano boost would be pretty good, right? You can nano boost your Genji. He could get Blade. You can nano boost your Winston at this point. We're pretty late to the party. And as a result, we're going to lose a lot of momentum, potentially, because of it. But we do manage to get back into the fight, helping our soldier over across the way. We even land a nice sleep onto the D.Va. I think it was still a pretty scary sleep, but hey, I mean, you're going to land him every once in a while. Uh, and uh, we also nano boost our Genji, who goes and kills everyone. And so that's the fight. But... You know, okay, he landed the sleep there, the crazy sleep on the D.Va, but still, I think that uh, it'll feel good to land that sleep, right? But I, I still kind of feel like that sleep might have been a little aggressive. I feel like that was not a very high percentage chance 
of succeeding. But hey, we're down to two, 30, two minutes, 30 seconds. We've stabilized quite a bit. Let's see if we can full hold it. Now, we've noticed his grenades have been a little bit off and his sleeps as well, as well as his angles or something as a tertiary sort of thing. Uh, oh, nice pick, by the way, uh, our Genji getting their soldier. That's going to prompt our team to just go ahead and rush in. Nice heals on the Lucio as well. Hey, not too bad, right? Now, there still is a Widowmaker, so we want to be careful, right? We want to be careful about peaking this angle. That's like instant death uh, at certain points. But so far, we haven't had too much to man out of us, and we haven't done anything too, too terrible. But here we're going to have a fight coming up. We have our Tracer down. Okay, this is, this is really where we go in, right? Uh, now, s long sleep. Again, very long, weird sleep that's never going to hit any well a very low chance of hitting anybody that's down that's not too good this grenade not looking too good either it's gonna it's gonna hit their winston which isn't too bad but still imagine it uh being well let's take a let's take a look at when he could have thrown the grenade right so here they're advancing up we our tracer dies dragon comes in we know that this is the commitment we even have a visor popped by our soldier right now. We should throw the grenade right now onto the soldier because he's about to get dove. So either over here or over here is definitely the place for the grenade because Winston will be throwing down a shield soon, and you know we don't have too much time. We need to throw the grenade fast in the fight as Anna versus a Diva and a Winston with all those barriers. Instead, we hold it for a while. Winston comes down. There's the barrier. We can't get a good grenade anymore. I mean, he got the best one he could have, theoretically, but still, it's just not enough. As Anna, you need to be getting at least two targets with your grenades uh, with modern Anna gameplay to uh, be good enough. That one is going to also whiff, and uh, that was a relatively easy grenade as well. It's just that he landed on the corner of the pay payload instead of going all the way in. Plus, that was an unfortunate timing uh, on the Winston shield. Another very... Um, premature sleep as well as the Winston jumps in now normally you would want to sleep not here not here not here but here this is this is the sleep this is almost this is like 90% accuracy a monkey could even Winston even Winston, even Winston could hit that shot right but instead Toby again jumping the gun a little bit he's going to die as a result the Winston is going to uh, will certainly live as a result he probably would have lived anyway because of the nano boost helping him out but here we have a nano boost available and we could have been alive nano boosting our Winston right now which would have uh, you know almost certainly done quite a lot that was that was a very nice grenade to you through there that, that was really well done a bit risky with the with the diva defense matrix but that was the sort of grenade you need to throw. One that's going to hit multiple targets. In fact, I thought it was going to hit his own Winston in addition to the two enemies, but I, I guess not. Another okay grenade, you know, not too bad. Let's go into the last fight here. So uh, we already, once again, our tracer goes down. I, man, Ice felt. Maybe you need a VOD review, man. Dying before every fight. Our soldier player goes down as well. This is almost certainly a push. In fact, most of the time you'd want to just go straight all the way back like don't even bother with this wait for the tracer to come back she she does have a fast respawn with her blinks right but instead it uh, looks like her genji's looking for the blade now this is it nano boost him got a nano boost him now it's a little bit too late he's probably dead but that was a small window of opportunity for a really nice nano boost didn't take it here's another window of opportunity for a nano boost as well also, notice that that grenade whiffed once again. So, for Toby, these games, uh, I think that this is a little bit of a rougher game than normal for him, right? But when you take these risky maneuvers, these risky sleeps, these risky grenades, well, just kind of suboptimal grenades, right? You're going to get some of these low roll games because that is literally all that Anna is about. Just always make sure you're at the optimal place. You know, you have to really think about it. And eventually it just becomes second nature, but you really need to know the exact literal optimal angles to be taking on these maps because it's not an RNG thing. It's not a chance thing. It should just be click, click, click every time you're taking that uh, to push for top 500. In addition, your sleeps are very, very suboptimal for uh, your skill level. 
you need to be much more patient with the sleeps. Hold them until later in the fight. It's stronger later in the fight anyway. And you'll land a lot more with the same accuracy. And there'll be much higher impact. Because right now, you're basically playing without sleep, essentially. You're basically just literally just unbind your sleep key. And that's kind of how you're playing Anna right now. As far as your grenades go as well, a little bit faster on those. A little bit crisper execution on the grenades. You're waiting a little bit too long, a little bit too indecisive, and as a result, you're not getting as clean of a grenade as you normally could have because right now you're playing against Winston's Divas. They don't give you too much of a window of opportunity. Like I said before, easy mode is to just, hey, if your Winston jumps in, follow him exactly as long as there's not a Diva defense matrix in the way. I'll be at DreamHack Atlanta this weekend, casting for AVGL's College Grudge Match series, plus doing some other, uh, you know, volunteer work on the main stage. I'm casting a random CS:GO event also, which should be pretty fun. I haven't, I haven't been dealing with that game for a long time, uh, but I'll be casting Saturday and Sunday. Definitely tune in. I'll be tweeting about it. Follow me on Twitter if you want to check it out. It's going to be a great event anyway. If you're there definitely come say hi to me tell me also what you thought about this gm review uh gm vod review it's like i said i usually don't do these because i feel like not a lot of players can get benefit out of these small tiny micro decisions that i'm talking about but i think it's cool to exhibit just how tight of the just how tight the gameplay is at this level you know a couple pixels to the left a, one slightly suboptimal angle here that looks okay technically you know and suddenly you've lost the entire match right so let me know if you want to see more gm reviews or if you want me to stick to more plat gold or mix it up you know that sort of thing uh i had a video for this weekend but it didn't turn out how i liked it so i'm going to just scrap it so no no videos for while i'm gone i'll be back tuesday and I should have something out then. I'll be starting up my stream as well. I think this close era has been going on for, going on for way too long. So I'm gonna I'm gonna book out of here, guys. I have a flight to catch in about an hour. <laughs> I uh, like I said, I had to scrap that other video I made because it just wasn't up it just wasn't up to par for me. So I had to make this one kind of last minute. Anyway, I think that's about it. I look forward to seeing all of you who are in Atlanta, and uh, I'll be tweeting uh, at you guys who didn't happen to come, and I'll be back Tuesday. Can't wait to come back. Never forget to stay positive and have a great day. See you later.